congratulations. It's a dream debut here at Alexander Palace. Just put into words what that would mean to you. It's a lot of pressure off of myself. I, I, I practice an awful lot and I put an awful lot into just this one game. Like regardless of what comes next, I put an awful lot into this. So just to get over the line was really, really good. Really, really nice. Thank you. You mentioned the pressure there. Obviously, you're battling to retain your PDC tour card as well as playing here at the World Championship. What was your mindset going into today's game? Um, I wasn't really thinking about my card to be honest, because I, I feel like if I didn't have the best of starts the first year which is my own fault, no one else's. I still put the same amount of practice in as I do, have done this year. But it's, it's my fault I didn't do very well the first year. No one else's. Um, but I've done OK this year. So hopefully, if I do lose my card, go back to Q school, I'll win it back and hopefully I'll, I'll give, a bit, give a bit of a better account of myself throughout the rest of, say, 2024, hopefully. You mentioned a slow start last year, but just a few weeks ago you made your first play the Championship final. Qualified for Minehead, so how much progress do you feel you've made in 2023? Uh, my, my practice game has started to come out a little bit on the playing boards, which is which is great for myself. I mean, I don't think anyone expected me to enter the players' champ like the players' finals or anything like that. Like make the final against Radek, I don't think anyone expected that. I think our joint world ranking was 150 something. I think it was a bit ridiculous, but um, we both had good days. It wasn't like we both played exceptionally well, like some of the other players do, averaging 110 and things like that. We were just steady for the days, and we took our chances, which was which was great for me. It was a great confidence boost knowing that I can do it if I need to. And up next to you is 2021 champion Gerwin Price in round two. But after a performance like that, how much confidence do you take into this game? Um, I, I'm not sure what the average was at the end of that or how good it really was, but I know I, I know what Gezi can do. I, I know what he can do. If I, if I play my game, I'll be able to put up a decent fight, and that's that's all I want from the game, really. I know if I if I play my A game, I've got a decent I've got a decent chance, really. But it's 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 all about just being comfortable up there. If I get comfy, I'll be difficult to stop. But it's about getting comfy first. And I know Gerwin is an extremely good player I know he is I'm not I'm not stupid and I'm not going to say oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to beat him because who knows no one knows really it's sport no one knows what's going to happen at sport at the end of the day that's why like we play it no one knows Excellent. thank you Connor knowing when you played the late side you went there as the favourite and you were overwhelmed and playing on the stage that day and I speaking to you afterwards how much did you learn from that experience coming here Loads, an awful lot. I uh, threw. I got here early enough today to have a throw on the stage beforehand to make sure. I got here at nine o'clock this morning, which was probably about an hour before any of any of the other players turned up, just so I could walk around the venue, have a look. I even come in the wrong entrance this morning, and I got an even better look of the place, just so I could get my bearings and I knew everything. The the, the better informed I am the better I'm going to play when I get up there I know what like where the practice balls are where everything is what I have to do everything else it was, it was great just getting here nice and early to have a look at the whole venue was great for me compared to Lakeside Lake, Lakeside was a mistake on my part I, I wasn't prepared enough uh, believe it or not I actually had a, a snapped point in my old darts which I won my tour card with and I made the semi-final with that year and I was playing my good stuff with I had a snap point a couple of days before the event. So I wasn't very well practiced with the darts I was using and things like that, but this time around I've got loads and loads of spare sets, They're all the same, so I'm a lot more prepared for every eventuality in this one. A lot more prepared. If you do lose your card, mm. what are the regrets that you'll have from year one? Because you spoke about it earlier that it was your own fault. Would there be a regret that year one has cost you knowing that you've done wrong? No. None, if I'm completely honest. I don't have any regrets because you can't you can't live your life like that. You can't live your life thinking, oh, what could have been. You just got to try and get a little bit better with each game that comes. It's not like I'm I'm not going to throw a dart tomorrow. Like if if I lose my card or anything like that, it's not like I'm going to stop playing. That, that's that's ridiculous. I'm not going to stop playing darts. So just try and get a little bit better for the year after. Try and get a little bit better for the year after that. There's no pressure. The, the game is in such a great place right now in the professional level and just under the professional level, whether it comes to money and time, stuff like that, you get looked after so, so well by the PDC and other people that there's no reason to really worry. All you've got to do is just get out there and throw darts. That's all you have to do. Whether you do well or do bad, it's not the end of the world. You spoke about how good Gezi can be, but at yeah. my end, he threw in a bit of a stinker, but 
for his high level. Are you hoping you get that version of Gezi? No, I, I'd, I, I'd, I'd rather Gezi at his best. I don't, I don't want people to... It, let's say, for example, I, I did go on and win. I'm not saying I will, because it's... Let's, like, let's take the bookies' ideas into account. It's a massive task. It's a huge task to do. But if he doesn't play very well, I don't want people to go, oh, well, you didn't play the best ver- version of Gary Price. Like a few people said after I beat Gary Anderson at the Players' Championships, I didn't play the Gary Anderson that was averaging 110, 111. I went 4-0 up on the Gary Anderson that was like missed a couple of darts to double and stuff like that. But if Gary played Gary's darts, he probably would have beat me that day. But I've stuck in and just done what I had to do. I can't control how anyone else plays. I can only control how I play. So hopefully it goes my way. If it doesn't, then it's one of those things. Connor, many congratulations. Thank you very much, Phil. Connor, you've been a promising player for, for many years now. We're finally starting to see the best of you and you manage these people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to finally get a bit of a... It's hard to explain. It's like a relief from all the practice I've been doing. Like, I'm, a, I'm a very religious nine to five practicer. Like I do eight hours a day, if not a little bit less for breaks and stuff. If my arms aching or something like that. Like, but if my other half goes to work and like say she leaves at seven, I'll start at half seven and I won't finish till she gets home at seven. Like, I've always been a big practicer just to make sure I'm prepared for everything that's going to come my way. So it's a, it's a relief that something's paid off finally. Really. <laughs> Uh, no, the, pre- the pressure is always on because you've got another game of darts to play. Like the, the, the pressure not being on means that you're not you're not trying your best. You haven't put enough into it. If you're not feeling a little bit under pressure, then either you know you're not going to perform, or you, you don't care enough. You got you have to care about what you're doing. If you don't, then what's the point of playing? Thank you. I don't want to keep mentioning it, but we've seen guys in the past like Nathan Aspinall, Dirkson, Davenport, and lose their talk up then come back, win title, and in case, win majors. Do you take confidence from that if that eventuality does happen? I was speaking about it the other week, actually, to be completely honest. I was thinking about oh, the amount of players that have lost it all. Even Martin Schindler, who hasn't gone on and won a major, but he's had a very, very successful career after losing his card. The amount, the amount you can learn after two years of having a tour card is immeasurable. You can learn an awful lot playing a lot in and like a lot of other avenues and things, but... No, nothing prepares you as well as playing two years of proper PDC darts. The amount of people that you can meet and speak to, like I'm one of those people, I chew the year off everyone just trying to get advice and what people do, what people don't do, like things like that. And in that match, Jess Christoph, I think it was near 96 average, over 60% on the doubles. If you can replicate that and maybe add an extra five percent, could you beat Gavin Price in the next round? Probably not. He, he's average. He, he's play, he's he said himself, like, he's got a... I keep an eye on social media. I probably shouldn't, but I do. But he's got a dark one up at the calf now and things like that. So he's practising very hard. He's going to be very, very... He's going to be very, very hard to stop. So I'm not writing off my chances and going into the match like, oh, no, I'm going to lose. But what will be, will be. If I play well, I've got a decent chance. But, obviously, the... the the form also that game is Gezi. He's the favourite for that game for a reason. It's not... It's not out of the realms for me to beat him, but it's it's. I wouldn't say it's, it's unlikely, but I'd have to play very well to win. I'd have to play well, and I know that. I'm just listening to you here, you sound like you've got a very positive mindset. Do you feel like that is, is a help, not just in this tour, but also moving forward in your career? Yeah, of course. There's you can't keep getting down yourself every two seconds. I've seen players throw their darts across the room and things like when I was a lot younger, not at the PDC, but when I was a lot younger just get in the hump of themselves and things like that but I've, I've never quite understood it like you're there to play darts you're there to enjoy it if you don't enjoy playing it then why are you doing it as a job or a career or anything like that the pressures can be bad don't get me wrong but I don't understand why people would play darts and put themselves in that situation if they don't enjoy it I, couldn't, I can't understand that so I just enjoy it take every day as it comes thank you Connor um, obviously the last question from Gordon Gerwin uh, he has troubles historically with the crowd, especially in Alexander Palace. For some reason, he can't get him on his side. Uh, do you have any extra preparation going to do for the potential change of the v- volume of noise you might encounter? No, no, none. I, I really enjoyed the, the bit of noise that was in there today, which I didn't think I was going to. I, I had a backup plan just in case. I had earplugs, like you never know if it's going to be too much of my first time here and things. 
Um, but no, I'm looking forward to it being loud, I think, which I didn't think I was going to say, but I'm looking forward to it. And you got that 138 check out in the first set. How did that just feel to watch that go in? Uh, I only went for 19s because I'm short. Because I'm because I'm nearly five foot nothing. I went for 19s and I thought, oh, if I get one of them, I might I might get lucky and get two. And I just threw as hard as I could for the double 12, and luckily enough, it went in. Thank you so much. Thank you.